Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Saturday night, party night, uh, April 8th, 2023. It is about uh, 9.58 p.m. out here along the West Coast. Here in California, the latest earthquake shows a 2.3 out here around the Turkey area. Uh, seeing a little bit of aftershock activity. Also, the Atlantic Ocean showing a little bit of movement here. Uh, considering it's been relatively quiet out here over the past couple of weeks, a 5.3 well off the coast here of the South America region into a divergent boundary. That's a uh, separation of the oceanic crust out there. All right, so what's going on out here? I, uh, I took a trip out to the Oregon area over the past couple of days, uh, more specifically up here in a beautiful area north of Brookings called Gold Beach, Oregon. In fact, someone recognized the live stream out there. Uh, I didn't specifically say where I was at, uh, but uh, they recognized the, the uh, live stream as being from the Gold Beach area of California or of uh, Oregon, excuse me. And that area specifically sits out here uh, within the region of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that's a whole reason I went up there, me and Miss Mimi's decided to take a trip up to the Southern Oregon area and investigate and kind of bring awareness uh, in terms of the potential of a damaging earthquake and subsequent tsunami within this area. And I am, uh, <clears throat> I have to say, I'm a little shocked here on the amount of people that I chatted with uh, throughout the Gold Beach area, Brookings area, Southern Oregon area today, and earlier, uh, well, yesterday as well included, uh, that did not really know about the Cascadia subduction zone. I tried to put a name with the potential hazard out here, and they were clueless about the activity out here. So uh, not going to judge anyone, but I, I, I kind of chimed in on what the potential is out here in this area of southern oregon and um, unfortunately a lot of people are misinformed on what can take place out here along the west coast um, i was chatting with some uh, a lady from reno nevada that was out there into the um, gold beach area she was stating that she was getting away from the snow up there in the reno area so chatted with her a little bit um, out on the beaches there of the Gold Beach, Oregon area. And um, we were chatting about earthquake activity. And um, she brought up that, uh, well, the last major earthquake activity out here along the West Coast was the 1906 earthquake back in, uh, in, in the San Francisco area. Technically, that has nothing to do with the Cascadia subduction zone up here into the area of the gold beach region so a lot of misinformation up here uh, into the oregon area a lot of people tend to think that uh, this area is not overdue uh, for a big one but it is in terms of well geology speaking uh, 1700 was the last earthquake out here along the cascadia subduction zone which by the way uh, can trigger a 9.0 or greater earthquake and a subsequent tsunami uh, potentially up to a hundred foot high 100 feet high uh, out here along certain areas of the coast range here i specifically picked out gold beach because it is in a prime area of a tsunami uh, when it comes to the uh, cascadia subduction zone and there's a lot of information when it comes to uh, the potential out here uh, we can chat about this probably for endless hours, but I'm not going to go into it. Um, there is a little bit of information in regards to the economic impact out here. Um, earthquake potential fatalities could range between 650 to 5,000 um, fatalities out here from a 9.0 out here along the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and that's just from the earthquake alone with an additional potentially up to 5,000 deaths due to the tsunami. So uh, if the earthquake doesn't uh, catch on, then the tsunami would probably finish it off, unfortunately. Uh, we're talking about 85,000 extensive damage um, 
to buildings out here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, according to the Office of Emergency Services there, um, there is a 37% chance that a mega thrust earthquake of at least 7.1 plus. Okay, now we know this area can produce a giant earthquake. There's been records and there's been studies on it. Uh, but there's at least a 37% chance of a 7.1 uh, earthquake plus in the fault zone uh, within the next 50 years. But I think that's a little bit higher. So this is what the Office of Emergency Management Services are uh, predicting out here along the Cascadia. I chatted with a few folks. There's three. It's been 323 years since we've seen the last major earthquake out here along the Cascadia subduction zone. So it's no joke, folks. The potential for damaging earthquakes exists out here. Um, a lot of people were asking me how far inland will a tsunami reach. Uh, well, I do have quite a few maps here. Uh, and according to uh, scientists and geologists, uh, they estimate that waves could be 30 to 40 feet in height when they hit the coast. But some models are suggesting here that some of the tsunami waves could reach 100 feet and in many parts of Oregon here, Washington and California, uh, more specifically this area of Oregon, they could flood up to 10 miles inland. And that's kind of why I picked this area of, of Oregon to kind of study uh, the, uh, the Rogue River area. It's a beautiful zone out here. I, seen, I, I kind of went along this road here uh, that you're seeing here on this map. And it's beautiful. Lots of pine trees all over the place. But man, uh, it's a wide open view here for a potential tsunami. And this is the Gold Beach area where the tsunami hazard zones exist. And looking at the map here, as you can see, um, the orange area, I was actually out here at a motel in the orange area, a little bit scary, uh, but that's where I was filming from earlier. Uh, today and also yesterday uh, on the live stream channel. So the orange area uh, just specifically is an evacuation zone for a distant tsunami from an earthquake far away from the Oregon region. So that whole specific area down here along the coastline. But this area is also included in a local Cascadia earthquake and tsunami, uh, which includes the areas of yellow almost the entire population out here of gold beach and i've seen um man did i have some good food i'm not even gonna brag i don't want to brag too much but there is some good food there at gold beach oregon and i'm gonna give a shout out to the gold beach oregon barbecue place there um i had a five meat sampler which um i couldn't eat <laughs> and i'm a big barbecue fan and uh, goodness if you're ever in gold beach area Make sure you visit the uh, Gold Beach Barbecue Place there um, in the southern end here of Gold Beach. So, unfortunately, they are included there in the yellow that uh, could be uh, inundated there with a major tsunami. 100-foot waves coming in uh, off of the Pacific. Um, I drove around some hills up here. And... Um, well, 100-foot wave, right? 100-foot wave is going to reach a good portion of even these elevated conditions. When you're driving around here across the Pacific coast, you'll see um, entering into a tsunami hazard zone, exiting into a, a hazard or tsunami hazard zone, and so on. But I, one thing I've noticed is there's no evacuation route. I never seen anywhere out here along the Southern Oregon area of a tsunami evacuation route telling me where to go so this is a kind of the main reason why i went up there to inform and potentially change um some uh, government activities up here right there should be more signs uh, in terms of where to go in case of a major tsunami uh, yes obviously that you're entering into a tsunami hazard zone and now you're exiting it but 
where are the evacuation routes? That's what people want to know. And I kind of chatted with quite a few people out there. And unfortunately, no one, <laughs> you know, not a lot of people want to be on um, camera. I kind of explained to them what I was doing, that I run a YouTube channel and I'm a geologist. And, and that's what we do. We kind of study earthquakes and stuff like that. But nobody, nobody up there wanted to be on camera. Um, so I will give... Uh, just their first names out here, the people I talked to. Uh, Kiera, Jim, and Jimmy. I talked to two Jims. Uh, Steve and Heather. Talked to a few different people out there into the Gold Beach area. And believe it or not, none of these people heard about the Cascadia subduction zone. So this kind of worries me, folks. Um, there's a lot of complacency out here along the Oregon area. And um, that is not good. That is definitely not good because this area is very prime and uh, very capable of producing a significant size earthquake offshore and a subsequent uh, tsunami that will obviously cover uh, the entire area of Gold Beach, Oregon. Uh, not to mention the entire area um, upstream here of Gold Beach, Oregon. This is a broader view uh, from a very awesome site. I, I want you guys to check this out. Um, I'll include this here in the description of the video, but this kind of shows you how far inland uh, the tsunami could travel here. Look at this. Well inland um, into, uh, I'm not for sure about this area here, but as you can see on the map here of Oregon, um, obviously the canyons and the rivers that flow downstream, right? You get the snow melt and the river runoff. Uh, flowing out to the ocean well obviously that means that water can flow in the in the upper direction um, and this uh it's not a good view definitely uh, areas around here look like it extends further than 10 miles inland here from a uh, tsunami that could take place along the cascadia so uh, my main prime objective going up to Oregon uh, over the past couple days was, was to inform people of the potential hazard out here. And I shouldn't, as a YouTuber, I shouldn't have to be the one informing people about it. It should be uh, the folks themselves being um, informed from, obviously, their local government, um, schooling, education, uh, and man it's it's a little scary folks that uh not too many people know about this it sits right offshore we you know if you watch this channel we know about the cascadia subduction zone and i think it plays a more major part than uh what people believe complacency right we all get complacent well nothing's gonna happen if it happens oh well uh the, the lady from reno i was talking to she was uh, a little bit older uh, than me, uh, but we were out there on the Gold Beach area. And uh, literally, uh, I can't get zoom in that far, but we were beach level, uh, literally within a couple feet of the waves. And the higher, highest mountain peaks there were, was probably a good mile away. And uh, they were probably above 500 feet or so. And I, I kind of mentioned to her that that would be the prime place to take cover to within 20 minutes of feeling a major extreme earthquake. We only have 20 minutes out here from the time a 9.0 strikes um, offshore to the time a potential 100-foot wave could come inland. And, uh, well, she basically said that, uh, well, th well, that would be it. You know, she couldn't make it. She would not be able to uh, run that distance. And that's an unfort unfortunate um, thought process, you know. Um, when me and Missy Mimi's was out there, we were like always thinking of an escape route. Where would we go? What would we do? Um, would we go back to the car, back to the motel, or would we just head for higher ground? It's all dependent, all subjective on where your location is. But I, uh, I need to get out a... Um, more information here to the Oregon coastline people 
Uh, there's just too many people out here that do not know what sits offshore and what to do. You know, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going to happen here? And they just panic and that's it. They don't realize that the main damaging potential here is a tsunami. Uh, seen some beautiful homes up here into the Gold Beach area uh, up on the hills and stuff like that. But even so, uh, this land right here, believe it or not, this land is uh, it's supposed to drop between five to six feet, uh, potentially more out here along certain coastlines. Uh, because this has been building up, right? You got pressure. It's hard to explain here, but you got pressure here building up along the coastline of Oregon, Northern California included, and Washington, and also Vancouver Island range. This is where we get our uplift here of the coastal range. The Juan de Fuca plate is being subducted underneath the North American plate here to the east, and that is providing a spring type of fashion. This is winding up pressure, so to speak. So there's always uptick vertical uplift here of the land you can see it right here with all these different fault systems they all got different names but it's the cascadia fold and thrust belt this is all rising out here due to the elevated land lift from the juan de fuca uh, subducting underneath the north american plate so when that subducts or when when the earthquake happens we're going to get that release of pressure and the land out here is going to drop uh, potentially more than six feet. So if you're standing at sea level, uh, this is going to drop well below that level. So not only do you have to deal with the uh, flooding at hand due to that drop, but the subsequent tsunami that will continue um, about 20 minutes later inland. Uh, so it, it, I think that's one of our most dangerous, hazardous areas out here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, obviously, we got Yellowstone, but I don't think Yellowstone, you know, far as far as the United States go, the most potential hazard is the Cascadia subduction zone. Yellowstone erupts every, I, I don't know what it is, but we're not seeing any signs of any eruption with Yellowstone National Park. Um with the Cascadia, been 323 years. 1700 is the last earthquake. 9.0, potentially greater out here along the Cascadia. This is our major, major natural hazard threat out here. That can create uh, a, a huge havoc out here, not only on the, the economy, but also um, life in general. I can only imagine some of these roads. Uh, and there's some windy, beautiful, curvy roads out here that I've seen. But man, I would not want to be out here. I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm back home here in Northern California because uh, we don't know exactly when this is going to take place. It could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. It could be in a few years from now. We just don't know. But... Uh, that's the whole thing, folks. I wanted to go up there and inform people, and I'm just a little disappointed in the amount of knowledge that's uh, being thrown around out there. I think this should be a major, major uh, educational process out here for the folks that live in the beautiful areas of Gold Beach and all along the entire area of the Cascadia. Um, I had no bad experiences with anyone out there. Everyone I came across was very professional, very nice. And, um, but also at the same time, you know, I hate to say it, clueless as to what's going on out here or what could potentially go on with the Cascadia subduction zone. All right, so let me look at the trimmer map here tonight. Oh, goodness, we got a little bit slight uptick in trimmer along the Cascadia, mostly northern end around the Seattle area, north of Seattle and uh, southern Oregon, just roughly due east of where I was at. So 406 epicenters. It may look like, and kind of looks like we are getting to the elevated uptick here of our expected regular intervals of trimmer uptick. Notice this trimmer uptick here occurs... Oh, that it varies 
but obviously we haven't had any extended uh, trimmer or lack of trimmer as what we've seen here uh, towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. But it looks as though things may be kicking up right about now with 406 epicenters of trimmer. We'll see if this gets elevated or not. Uh, but also at the same time, watch for potential earthquake activity. Um, hold on a second here. Uh, towards those areas where we're seeing tremor activity uptick. That includes areas outside of Seattle and uh, roughly around the Gold Beach, Oregon area. We'll see if things kick up there in that region. Um, this is a very interesting map to look at, folks. I want you guys to see it uh, and observe it and watch it very closely. One of our main areas of of hazards here when the Cascadia kicks up. Believe it or not, check out Seattle. Would you think Seattle would be affected by a tsunami? Oh, yes, you bet. There's a huge open bay here that runs through the area north of Seattle. Can't remember what it's called, but uh, it's the borderline of Canada and the United States. And, uh, well, look at that tsunami potential there goes well into seattle uh, i want you guys to look at this and observe this map very um extremely if you guys live in this area okay up in the mountain ranges obviously some some shaking's going to go on but the tsunami could be the more deadly effect got to make sure i save this now i'll obviously provide that um website to you guys when the video is uploaded. All right, let's move on here. Uh, looking at the rest of the area, Bay Area is pretty quiet. Not a whole lot of activity being reported there tonight in uh, San Francisco. Most of the movement here down south in the San Jacinto Fault Zone, just on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. L latest earthquake shows a 0.9 Borrego Springs, but nothing major going on. Quick glance at the 2.5 map and above. Well, it looks like uh, 3.6 south of the border, Mexicali area, just off the Imperial Fault Zone, the plate boundary down there. Aside from that, uh, California is very quiet for now, very quiet. Not a whole lot going on throughout Yellowstone National Park. Let's uh, check out Yellowstone there in Wyoming. It is a super volcano, but it's obviously something... I like to pay attention to because it does kick up on the earthquake swarm on occasion. This was earlier this morning and afternoon. A couple small microquakes, obviously, but no major earthquake movement. No magma movement. No doom and gloom across the area of that super volcano for now. Uh, the rest of the country, goodness, awfully quiet. A little bit of movement across Puerto Rico and the Middle America Trench. South America region seen some deeper activity earlier today with a 4.2 in the Chile region outside of the uh, Peru Chile Trench here, 165 kilometers deep. Uh, one latest earthquake out here into the Atlantic Ocean, a 5.1. It's a divergent boundary. It's on the St. Paul fracture zone. A couple different fractures out here close to the equator. Uh, further east, there's that movement across the Himalayas, northern India, across Myanmar, and the Java Trench. We've noticed a little bit of uptick here across the region here today. Uh, although most of the activity looks like it's older movement from this morning. Notice the redder color rings. Most of the newer activity. Goodness, there's a deep earthquake activity there. Um, which one is that? The so 4.0 into the, um, is that the Banda Sea area? 450 kilometers deep. That is a super deep earthquake and fairly new for that region. Uh, nothing showing up here around the Banda Sea for now. Mostly earlier earthquake activity, but consistently deep. Definitely seen some deep activity out here across the area. Um, that could spell trouble. Obviously, across the region of Indonesia and westward here, that uh, earthquake 
plate tectonic map here it shows you the general GPS movements here of the plates. This is the general plate drift, plate movement here. Pacific plate obviously moving well to the northwest. Got a huge line here of crunching movement across the Australia plate, Eurasia plate, and the Pacific plate all combining here in this area. That's that's why we're seeing all that earthquake activity. It's one of our main regions of the hot spot uh, activity kicking up. So watch this area pretty closely. The Philippine plate here up north got some deeper movement here into the Mariana Islands area, northern Mariana Islands with a 4.4, 177 kilometers deep. Watch for some subsequent shallow earthquake activity upstream. Not a whole lot through the Kurokamachaka Trench. Of course, Alaska has shown some movement uh, with a little bit of heightened activity there across the Aleutian Trench here with a 5.1 coming in earlier this afternoon. One uh, earthquake way up north here of the Brooks Range. Northern Alaska, 2.8, 40 kilometers deep. We don't see a whole lot of activity up here, but no serious some mountain ranges out here. There's obviously some plate dynamics taking place in that area. All right, Big Island of Hawaii. Looks like Kilauea Volcano firing up a little bit. I don't know if we got any major uh, adjustment going on, but let's go ahead and check out the hazard notification system here from the USGS. That kind of gives us an indicator of what's going on daily across these volcanoes. Uh, it currently is not erupting according to the USGS as of um, today. Uh, over the past day, no significant changes have been observed along the volcano's rift zones. No active fissures. And it uh, looks like things are calming down. Doesn't look like too much activity kicking up there. But uh, there is some earthquake activity. Relatively well. Hold on a second here. Get some deeper movement. Look at that. Even though these are relatively new, these earthquakes are occurring down there about 10 to 14 kilometers below the surface so that could be uh, an indicator of some recharging of the magma chambers we'll watch that pretty closely a little bit of activity stretching out towards the lohi sea mount off the coast of pahala 30 kilometers deep I'll definitely keep that area in mind uh let's see what else do we have out here anything major uh, going on across new zealand we did have a 3.0 fairly recent earthquake down here Go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers for the latest earthquake activity, including all magnitudes, 1.5. There's our 3.0. Looks like well off the coast of North Island, 50 kilometers deep. A glance here at the earthquake drums. Um, not, not seeing a whole lot of activity. Can't even really see that 3.0. It's definitely well off the coast, so earthquake activity fairly minimal across the region of New Zealand. All right, what else, folks? What else do we have? Let's check out space weather here. Um, <coughs> I had a good time up in Oregon, definitely. Um, even though we're up there kind of on business terms. It was uh, definitely nice to chat with a few folks. Hold on. And, um, you know, get to know some of the locals out there and inform them of what's going on or the potential of what could take place out there uh, within their community. But, uh, goodness, I, I really wish there was more education in terms of the um, Cascadia potential. Of Oregon. All right, a ginormous, massive sunspot here with a, a number of different magnetic structures of the sunspot fields. That is our main threat right now. It's looking fairly promising and producing potentially another M flare here very soon. We do have a 95% chance of a C flare, M flare at 30. X flare at 5% chance. I think that uh, potential there 
uh, within that uh, sunspot, could we could see an X flare. We'll definitely keep an eye on that pretty closely. The latest imagery here, the UV filter, shows that uh, sunspot in question looking fairly dynamic. Look at these magnetic fields sticking out fairly nicely. But it is growing. It's getting very complex, and that does hold a, a potential of some stronger flares in the coming minutes, hours, and days. We'll definitely watch this. Right now, it is kind of sitting off um, towards the southeastern limb of the sun, but uh, we'll watch this as it rotates further into the Earth directed view. Um, no major auroras forecasted here over the next few nights. Very minimal activity at best across the higher latitudes. I mean, I, I would not even be out there tonight. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see anything. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center. What do we got for weather activity? Nothing severe, which is good news for now. It, we are entering, obviously, into springtime. And uh, for now, there's no major severe weather threat. Uh, I do want to look at the West Coast here. When I was up in Oregon, by the way, I picked up half an inch of rain here at my place once again. So um, that's just adding on to our extreme total of precipitation here for this winter in Northern California. Uh, the next couple storms are going to be limited here towards the Northern Oregon and Washington area. Notice the high pressure system out here bringing in some warmer temperatures. Tomorrow's supposed to be 78 degrees. I think I'm going to break out the uh, I'm going to break out my my shorts here and try and work on my suntan a little bit. Uh, but it looks as though our next storm system may be on the 17th to 18th of April. So in the uh, in a week or so, we'll see how this plays out. After that, uh, looks like things may be a little cooler before it warms up back again. But man, that does spell trouble out here along the southern plains with some severe weather. Definitely keep an eye on this, folks. Um, it's been an odd one, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, out here in California, we've seen one of our most um, snowfall packs in history. In history for a La Nina year. And one of our most wettest winters out here um, in the uh, Sacramento Valley. So we're pretty much out of the drought, so to speak, here. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing... Uh, you know, all, all this greenery lasts towards the uh, June area. It's super green out here in California right now. And uh, normally it would be probably dry as far as the vegetation goes by the end of April. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to see things kind of uh, stay green out here towards summertime, which is good news. Trust me, we want the greenery. All right, uh, what else do we have here, guys? Um, oh, man, we're past 30 minutes out here. Okay. <laughs> um, we do have the member drawing coming up here in approximately a week. On the 15th of April, we'll be doing our member-only drawing here. We'll give it away some prizes here. Um, $50 Visa, MasterCard, uh, gift card, whatever you want. Or potentially an Earthmaster merchandise uh, t-shirt from our store if you want that. Or potentially a geology mining kit if you're into that as well. Um, so we're coming up on that here in about a week. We'll be giving away that uh, prize to our members here soon. All right. Uh, I think that's about it. Goodness. But uh, I do want to, you know, for the folks up there in Gold Beach, Oregon... I appreciate uh, talking to the folks out there, and I just hope everyone gets informed on the the potential uh, for, a, for a damaging earthquake and tsunami, and just make sure you have an earthquake plan up there. Uh, I'm hoping to send out a couple emails here to some local officials, officials up there in the Curry County, Oregon area, uh, in regards to potentially creating some new signage. Uh, in regards, you know, to the tsunami, people need to know where to go. Where do you go when you have a big earthquake, right? Do 
you just travel on 101 north or south, nobody knows. There needs to be an earthquake and tsunami plan up there along the Oregon area. Some people, some towns have it. Gold Beach, Oregon, I, I was just a little disappointed. I didn't see it. I really didn't see the evacuation routes. Uh, at least it didn't pop out in my view, and they need to be standing out. In times of disaster, in times of trouble, people need to know where to go, right? I, I, I don't think I'm the only one that agrees with this. I think everyone would agree with this. So uh, I'm going to send an email there to some officials um, on what I found, my discovery, just my observations from an uh, outsta outstanding type of uh, view. And I uh, hope we can get some change out there along the uh, coastline in regards to uh, the appropriate routes of tsunami evacuees out there. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe. And I think I'm going to call it a night. It's been, it's been fun, but I am pretty tired. It's a long drive up there from where I'm at. Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys a little bit later.